स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Hello friends I welcome you in the last session of the course of administrative law in this last session we will discuss the right to information the right to information it is very fundamental and basic right for any democracy to survive and for also the rule of law to survive without informed citizenry a sound democracy cannot prevail the citizens of any country the citizens of any democratic or representative society must be entitled to know that what functions are being performed by the government and what are the manners what are the ways in which the government is performing its functions without knowing the functioning of the government one cannot determine whether the government should continue to run or not and therefore for determining whether a person is to vote in favor of the government or not the right to information becomes the basis if the citizens are not aware of the functioning of the government if they are not aware how the government is working they cannot take the right decision and therefore for any democracy to be sound and to ensure the responsible and accountable government right to information becomes must the foundation of any democracy is grounded on openness transparency and accountability in the working of the government the openness can be possible only when the people are entitled to know about the functioning of the government in a sovereign democratic republic like india the people are self governing and they are considered to be sovereign they have the right to know what the government and their representatives are doing in the democratic and representative civilizations information is considered to be the power in the hands of common people hence informed citizenry is indispensable for the transparent accountable and responsible functioning of a real democratic government entitlement of citizens to right to information is considered to be a effective safeguard against abuse of power mal administration and corrupt practices it is also valuable and advantageous and expedient to the government because openness and transparency in the decision making process promotes and upholds the confidence of the people in the governmental actions recognizing the prominence and significance of right to information the united nations general assembly adopted a resolution 50 number 59 1 in its very first session in 1946 which states that freedom of information is a fundamental human right and the touchstone of all freedoms to which the united nations is consecrated we can understand the significance of right to information the significance of the entitlement of the citizens to know about the functioning of the government 
that in its very first session in 1946 through the resolution number 591, the United Nation had to declare that freedom of information is a fundamental human right. It is not only the fundamental human right, but in accordance with the opinion of United Nations, it is also the touchstone of all the freedoms which the United Nations is consecrated. So, this is the significance of, this is the value of right to information that it is fundamental human right, number one and number two, it is touchstone of all the freedoms. It means that without having right to information, the other fundamental rights cannot be properly availed. So, if the citizens are made to be entitled for their fundamental rights, it is important that they should first given the right to know or right to information or freedom of information. Therefore, the right to information was recognized as fundamental right within the scope of right to speech and expression, freedom of speech and expression guaranteed under Article 19.1 of Indian Constitution. In the case of Raj Narayan versus State of Uttar Pradesh, which was decided by our Supreme Court in 1975, the Supreme Court of India has guaranteed, has recognized the right to information as a fundamental right under Article 19. The court held that in our democracy, people are the leaders and they are entitled to right to know about the working of the government. In first judge case, that is S.P. Gupta vs. Union of India, decided by the Supreme Court in 1982, the Apex Indian Court held that the citizens are entitled to right to know the true facts about the administration of the country by their representatives and it is considered one of the foundational pillars of any democracy, democratic state. Therefore, the demand for openness in the government is increasingly growing in different parts of the world. In S.P. Gupta case, the Supreme Court of India pointed out the justification for the guarantee of right to information. Under Article 19.1, within the scope of freedom of speech and expression in Article 19.1a, the right to information, the right to know, the freedom of information, the freedom of press was recognized by Indian court, Indian Supreme Court in several cases. As in the case of S.P. Gupta, the Supreme Court was of the view that because the right to information or freedom of information is the foundational pillar of the democratic state, because of this reason, the demand for openness, the demand for transparency in the government is increasingly growing in different parts of the world. The Supreme Court of India witnessed the increasing demand of right to information in the different countries of the globe and therefore this remark was made by our Supreme Court. If we see such demands in Indian state, here also different social movements and political initiatives started for the recognition of right to information. Though the right to information was already was earlier recognized by our Supreme Court under Article 19.1a, but there was no such legislation which could enforce the right to information of the citizens of this country properly. And therefore, there was a need of a particular legislation, there was a need of an effective law so that the right could be exercised in an appropriate way. There were different social movements, political initiatives with regard to the recognition of 
right to information through an independent and an effective legislation. In this series, the Mazdoor Kisan Sakti Sangathan campaign, the national campaign on people's right to information, the Commonwealth Human Rights Initiative campaign and the movements by consumer and other groups may be referred to in this regard. This has been the background for the enactment of Freedom of Information Act in India. And in the same background, the Freedom of Information Act 2002 was enacted by Indian Parliament. This Freedom of Information Act 2002 was enacted with an objective to guarantee right to information and to ensure openness and transparency in the government. As the openness, the transparency and the accountability in the government is the basic foundation on which the grand building of democracy is built. It was considered to be the grand initiative because after a long demand, long ever demand by different social movements and after the consistent political initiatives that could have been done by the Indian parliament, that Indian parliament could enact the Freedom of Information Act 2002 and therefore it was a great initiative to fulfill the aspirations of the citizens of India with regard to right to information. But this enactment had its own weaknesses, this enactment had its own pitfalls, shortcomings and because of these weaknesses, shortcomings and pitfalls, it could not be proved to be an effective law to guarantee or to enforce the freedom of information of the citizens of this country. Therefore, there was again felt a grave need of an effective, meaningful and a strong law to guarantee right to information of the citizens of this country in true manner. The act which was enacted in 2002 in the name of Freedom of Information Act 2002 was recommended to the National Advisory Council and the National Advisory Council recommended for repealing it and for enacting a new effective legislation. The Indian Parliament on the recommendation of Advisory Council repealed the Freedom of Information Act 2002 and enacted the Right to Information Act in the year of 2005. If we see the statement of reasons and object of Right to Information Act 2005, it seems that the Right to Information Act 2005 was enacted to provide for setting out the practical regime of right to information for citizens to secure access to information under the control of public authorities and to promote transparency and accountability in the working of every public authority. These have been the important objectives of the Right to Information Act, which are provided in the statement of object and regions of the Act. Number one, to provide for the practical regime of right to information for the citizens and why to provide for such practical regime of right to information to secure access to information under the control of public authorities. So, what were the objectives of this act? Number one, to set up the practical regime of right to information for the citizens. Number two, to secure the access to information under the control of public authority. Number three, to promote transparency and accountability in the working of every public authority. There was one more challenge before the parliament to harmonize between the conflicting interest 
or two opposite ends. As we know that in the regime of social welfare state, we need an effective administration. We need such an administration which may be capable of ensuring the welfare of the people of the country. On the other hand, it was also important to save or to protect the basic freedoms of the citizens of the country. The harmonization in conflicting interest like revelation of information in actual practice on one hand and efficient operations of the governments, optimum use of limited fiscal resources and the preservation of confidentiality of sensitive information on the other has also been an important objective behind enacting this law. And therefore, we can say that the Right to Information Act 2005 made the effort to harmonize these two conflicting interests. The revelation of information in actual practice was certainly important and significant to preserve the freedoms of the people of this country, to preserve and maintain our democratic standards, to ensure the openness and transparency in the governmental functioning. But on the other hand, it was also important to ensure the efficient operations of the governments, because in absence of the efficient operations on the part of the government, the objectives of the constitution itself which are set out in the preamble of our constitution cannot be achieved and therefore the efficient administration or the efficient operations of the government were equally important. In addition to this, the optimum use of limited fiscal resources that was also one important aspect to be dealt with by the parliament at the time of enacting right to information act. We know the fact that in our constitution, the fundamental rights are made enforceable, whereas the directive principles are not. Though the directive principles of a state policy are the community rights and which are needed or which are required to ensure the social and economic justice in the country, that social and economic interest of the country has also been an important goal set out in our in the preamble of our constitution. Then it was also one important aspect so that the government could, could make the optimum use of limited fiscal resources and the preservation of confidentiality of sensitive information was also one important aspect to be dealt with the right to information act. All the informations cannot be disclosed to the citizens or to the people of the country. There are some sensitive informations like the informations relating to maintain the friendly relations with the foreign countries, the informations relating to the security and sovereignty of the country, the informations relating to the organizations relating to the intelligence of the country, the organizations relating to the defense strategies or the informations relating to maintaining the law and order, particularly with reference to the criminal activities or the criminal law. The informations which are very personal and these are held by the state or the public authorities these were the sensitive informations. So, that was also the challenge before the parliament at the time of enacting right to information act that how the harmony could be maintained between the need to reveal the information in actual practice on the one hand and to ensure the efficient operations of the government the optimum use of limited fiscal resources and the confidentiality of the sensitive informations on the other.
Now, if we see the provisions of the Right to Information Act, we will discuss the important provisions of Right to Information Act. First of all, before going to the details of the provisions of Right to Information Act, it is important for us to know about the meaning and definition of some important words or the terms used in Right to Information Act. Section 2 provides for the definitions, it is called as definition clause. In definition clause, the information has been defined, which is the basis of this Right to Information Act until and unless we do not know that what the term information do mean, does mean, we cannot have the access of information. So, first of all, the citizens who have been given the right to information, who have been guaranteed the right to information, they should know that what the term information may mean and what kind of informations they can seek from the public authorities. Section 2 f defines the inf term information. According to this definition given by section 2 f of right to information act, the information means any material in any form including records, documents, memos, emails, opinions, advices, press releases, circulars, orders, log books, contracts, reports, papers, samples, models, data material held in any electronic form and information relating to any private body which can be accessed by public authority under any other law for the time being in force. This is the meaning of information which is given by section 2 f of the act. You can understand that the meaning of the term information is very comprehensive and it includes all kinds of informations including the information relating to any private body which can be accessed by the public authority. Though the personal information is exempted under section 8 of the enactment, but if we can take the information only from the public authorities or relating to public authorities. But under the meaning of information, the citizens are entitled to, to take those information to receive those informations relating to the private bodies which can be accessed by the public authority under any other law for the time being in force. Section 2 H defines the public authority because right to information guarantees the right of the citizens to receive the information which are held by the public authorities or which are under the control of public authorities. So, you can take the information only those informations which are either held by the public authorities or which are under the control of public authorities and therefore, the meaning of the term public authority also becomes relevant for the purpose of seeking the informations for pub from public authorities or to avail the right to information. According to the meaning given by section 2 h to the term public authority, public authority means any authority or body or institution of self government established or constituted by or under the constitution. So, all the bodies or institutions of self government which are established by or under the constitution are the public authority for the purpose of this act. Any authority or body or the institution of self government which is constituted by any other law made by parliament. So, any body, any authority constituted by the constitution is the public authority. Any body, any authority, any institution of self government constituted by any other law made by parliament is the public authority. Any body, any authority, any institution of self government which is constituted by any other law made by state legislatures are the is the public authority. 
any body, any authority, any institution of self-government which is constituted by notification issued or order made by the appropriate government is also considered to be the public authority. And then in addition to these bodies or authorities or the institutions of self-government which are constituted either by the constitution or by law of the parliament or by the law of state legislatures or by the notification issued or order made by the appropriate government. In addition to these bodies, the term public authority also includes within its scope any body owned, controlled or substantially financed directly or indirectly by funds provided by the appropriate government. Any non-government organization substantially financed directly or indirectly by funds provided by the appropriate government. So, again we can say that the meaning of the term public authority has also been defined in or explained in very comprehensive terms. All those authorities and bodies and the institutions of self-government are included within the meaning of public authority which are either constituted by the parliament, parliamentary legislation or by the state legislation made by the state or by any notification or the order issued by the appropriate government and it also includes those bodies which are owned, controlled or substantially financed directly or indirectly by the funds provided by the appropriate government, even the non-governmental organizations, the NGOs, which are substantially financed by the appropriate government directly or indirectly by funds are included within the meaning of public authority. Section 2 I refers to the meaning of the term record, because what is the right to information? when we will see it uses the term record. The record includes number one, any document, manuscript and file, any microfilm, any microfiche, any facsimile, copy of a document, any reproduction of image or images embodied in such microfilms, whether enlarged or not and any other material produced by the computer or any other device. So, the record is not confined within its scope only to the documents and manuscripts and files. Traditionally, we mean that the record refers to any document, record refers to any manuscript, record refers to any file. But in this modern regime of the modern technology, computer generated records or computer generated materials are also included within the meaning of the record. Then section 2j defines the right to information. It is very important definition because only on the basis of this meaning of right to information, the citizens are entitled to receive the informations. Right to information means the right to information accessible under this act, which is held by or under the control of any public authority and includes. The definition of right to information has two parts. In first part, the meaning is given that the right to information means the right to information accessible under this act which is held by or under the control of any public authority. Right to information means right to such information which is accessible under this act, because under the act itself the exemptions are also made from the disclosure of the information. Certain informations have been identified under section 8 which cannot be disclosed, may not be disclosed by the public information officer, he can deny the disclosure of those informations. 
it means those informations are not accessible under the act. So, you have the right to information only to those informations which are accessible under the act and the second aspect is which are held or which are under the control of any public authority. So, you can receive only those informations under the right to information act by availing your right to information which informations are accessible under the act you cannot receive you are not entitled to get you do not have the right to get those informations which are exempted under the act which cannot be given which cannot be disclosed. So, you have the right only to those informations which informations are accessible number one and number two the informations which are accessible if these are held or these are under the control of any public authority only then you are entitled to receive that information from the public authority. If the public authority does not hold any particular information or this information is not under the control of that public authority, you do not have or you are not entitled to the right to information to receive that information from that public authority. How to receive? We will discuss later on. Then the next part of the definition of right to information or the meaning of right to information given in section 2j is inclusive. It includes certain informations, certain ways to receive the information. Right to information includes inspection of work, documents and records. Means under right to information act, you are not only entitled to make an application for receiving any information, you are also entitled to inspect the work being done by any public authority. You are entitled to inspect the documents in the office of any public authority. You are entitled to inspect any records. You are also entitled to take notes, extracts or certified copies of documents or records. So, you are not entitled only to see, only to inspect. You can also take the extracts of those documents, records or materials or you can also claim the certified copy of those documents or records taking certified samples of the material. If you are going to inspect any work being done by the public authority, you can take the sample of the materials being used by the public authority. Obtaining information in the form of diskets, floppies, tapes, video cassettes or in any other electronic mode or through printouts where such information is stored in a computer or in any other device. This is also very comprehensive definition of right to information. Within the meaning of right to information, it you are entitled to all these rights. Section 2 n defines the term third party. Third party means a person other than the citizen making a request for the information and includes a public authority. So, who is the third party? You are making the application to a public authority seeking the information then other than you and that public authority to which you are making the application all are the third party either these are the individuals or these are other public authorities. Section 3 states that subject to the provisions of this act, all citizens shall have the right to information. This is the declaration of right to information. This is the guarantee. Section 3 guarantees the right to information. Section 3 says that subject to the provisions of this act, all Indian citizens shall have the right to information. Section 4 is also important because under section 4, some obligations have been imposed over the public authorities. What are these obligations which are imposed over the public authorities by section 4? 
ایچ اینڈ ایوری پبلک اتھارٹی از اوبلائز ان اکارڈنس ود دا پروویژنس آف سیکشن 4 ٹو مینٹین آل اٹس ریکارڈس ڈیولی کیٹالگ اینڈ انڈیکسڈ ان اے مینر اینڈ ان دا فارم وچ فیسیلیٹیٹس دا رائٹ ٹو انفارمیشن انڈر دس ایکٹ سو آل دا پبلک اتھارٹیز آر اوبلائز ٹو مینٹین آل دا ریکارڈس ان دا فارم ان وچ دیز کین فیسیلیٹیٹ the right to information the public authorities are obliged to publish the following informations which are provided in the act itself to publish all the relevant facts while formulating important policies or announcing the decisions which affect the public each and every public authority is obliged to provide reasons for its administrative or quasi judicial decisions which affected which affected the persons or affecting the persons so provide the reasons for its administrative or quasi judicial decisions which affected the persons every public authority is obliged to provide as much information sumo to to the public at regular intervals through various means of communications including internet so that the public have minimum resort to the use of this act to obtain information because though the right to information is very important very significant and it create a environment of openness and transparency in the governmental functioning but on the other hand it is also the fact that frivolous applications the applications for maintaining undue pressure over the public authorities and public officials have been filed as a tactic by many information seekers and therefore this aspect was also tackled by the legislature at the time of enacting the law that the public authorities must disclose the maximum information through various means including the internet like websites etc so that the citizens would have very minimum opportunity to make the application for seeking any information if any public authority is sufficiently open and transparent in uh, making the duties obligations or in performing the functions in exercising the powers and it discloses all the information through various means then there would be no need to seek the information from that public authority section 5 provides for the designation the appointment of public information officers it has been laid down by section 5 sub section 1 that every public authority shall within 100 days of the enactment of this act designate as many officers as the central public information officers or state public information officers as the case may be in all administrative units or offices under it as may be necessary to provide information to persons requesting for the information under this act so the micro management has been done through section 5 by the legislature legislature wishes that each and every public authority should appoint should designate the public information officers not at the level of public authority but in all the administrative units in all the administrative offices of a public authority for example if there is a big institution there is a big university for example and this university has the hundreds of departments hundreds of offices and one information officer is appointed at the level of public authority that may not be sufficient for the purpose of right to information act and therefore it is intended that 
each and every public authority must designate, must appoint the central public information officers or the state public information officers in all the administrative units, in all the offices of that public authority, so that the right to information may be availed by the citizens of this country and they may have the information, they may seek the information even from a micro level of that public authority. Then the central public information officer and the state public information officers, what does it mean? There are two kinds of public authorities as we know that India is a federal country and there are two separate units to govern the same territory and same population. At the center, the union government and at the level of states units, the state governments are there. There are two kinds of public authorities, one which are under the control of the central government or which are the departments of the central government and other which are the departments or the authorities or the different bodies under the control of state governments. So, in central in the authorities under the central government or union government would designate the central public information officers and the authorities under the state governments would appoint the state public information officers, the CPIOs for the central authorities and the SPIOs for the state authorities. There is also the provision for the appointment and designation of assistant public information officers at both the levels for the public authorities under the central government, the central assistant central public information officers and for the public authorities under the state governments, the assistant state public information officers. Then the section 6 comes as the most relevant provision I would like to say because it is the basis which entitles the citizens of this country to make the request to make an application seeking the information. The manner of making the application has also been provided in section 6 and the responsibility of the public information officers to assist the information seekers is also provided in section 6. According to subsection 1 of section 6, a person who desires to obtain any information under this act shall make a request in writing or through electronic means in English or Hindi or in the official language of the area in which the application is being made, accompanying such fee as may be prescribed, specifying the particulars of the information sought by him or her, to whom? To the central public information officers or the state information officer as the case may be of the concerned public authority. Two aspects, number one, that an application in writing is to be made along with the prescribed fee to whom to the central public information officer if the public authority is under the central government and to the state public information officer of that authority if that authority is under the state. Then clause B the central assistant public information officer or state public information officer. You can make the request directly to central public information officers or also to assistant public information officers. Provided that where such request cannot be made in writing the central public information officer or state public information officer as the case may be shall render all reasonable assistance to the person making the request orally to reduce the same in writing. It is very important for the country like India whether still the 
citizens are illiterate they are not in position to make an application or the request in writing and therefore the obligation has been imposed over the public information officers themselves that if any oral request is made you cannot reject that request you are to assist the information seeker or the applicant or the person making the request to reduce that oral request in writing an application making request for information shall not be required to give any reason for requesting the information or any other personal details except those that may be necessary for contacting him so the public information officer cannot ask for the reason for which the person seeks the information and he cannot seek the personal details of the applicant except those details which are necessary for contacting that person where an application is made to public authority requesting for information which is held by another public authority or the subject matter of which is more closely connected with the functions of another public authority the public authority to which such application is made shall transfer the application or such part of it as may be appropriate to that other public authority and inform the applicant immediately about such transfer such application shall be transferred within 5 days from the date of receipt of the application again one obligation is imposed over the public information officers or the public authorities to whom the applications are made if any application is made to a particular public authority or to a particular public information officer of a particular public authority seeking the information which is neither held by that public authority not under the control of that public authority the public authority or the information officer public information officer cannot reject the request on the ground that the public authority does not hold the information or the information is not under the control of public authority whereas he is to transfer that application to that appropriate public authority which holds this information or the information relates to the functions of that public authority the time period has also been specified within 5 days the public authority is to transfer this request transfer this application to that appropriate public authority section 7 provides for the disposal of application section 6 provides for the making of application making of request and section 7 provides for the disposal of application by the public authority by the public information officers of the concerned public authority the time limit has also been prescribed to dispose of an application under the right to information act section 1 subject to the proviso to subsection 2 section of section 5 or proviso to subsection 3 of section 6 the cpio or state public information officer on the receipt of request under section 6 shall expeditiously as possible and in any case within 30 days this is the time limit you are to take note of this 30 days of the receipt of the request either provide the information on payment of such fee as may be prescribed or reject the request for any of the reasons specified in the section 8 and 9 if the sought information concerns the file or liberty of life or liberty of any person in that case information shall be provided within 48 48 hours if the information relates to the life or liberty of a person then only 48 hours are given to the public information officers to supply the information otherwise normally 30 days are given from the receipt of the application 
within 30 days the public information officers are required to give the information either to give the information or to reject the application and if the public information officer decides to reject the application then it is to specify the grounds on which the application is being rejected. Responsibility of public information officer to provide assistance to disabled persons. It has also been provided in section 7 that if the information seeker or the applicant is any disabled person or any specially abled person, then the public information officer is to assist that person in this regard. See section 7 subsection 4 where access to the record or part thereof is required to be provided under this act and the person to whom access is to be provided is sincerely disabled. The central public information officer or the state public information officer as the case may be shall provide assistance to enable access to information including providing such assistance as may be appropriate for the inspection. There is the provision for the imposition of the charges other than the fee. If the information sought has the voluminous information and there will be a cost to supply that information, then that cost, additional cost can be charged on the applicant itself. Under the rules made under RTI Act, the cost has been prescribed for each and every kind of information for the papers. If a size paper is there, if on the basis of number of papers that can be calculated. If it is to be given in pen drive, floppies, diskettes, CDs, then also the cost has been identified and the public information officer is required to provide the calculation of cost also. Section 7 provides for all the aspects of disposal of the request for information. Exemption of cost has been provided in section 7 subsection 6. Requirement of regions to rejection has been provided in section 7 subsection 8. Form in which the information is to be supplied informations exempted from disclosure section 8 provides for all those informations which exempted under the act then information relating to the third party if the information sought by the applicant relates to the third party then the different procedure is to be adopted the information officer is required to first consult with the third party if that information has been supplied has been given by that third party to the public information officer in the confidence that it would not be disclosed to others then the public information officer is first to give the notice to the third party and after consultation with the third party he is to decide whether the information is to be furnished or not in section 12, the composition of CIC, Central Public Information, is provided. The qualification of the Chief Information Commissioner, the qualifications for the person to be appointed as Information Commissioners has been provided in Section 12. Section 12 provides for the manner in which the appointments are to be made. There is a committee which committee is to appoint the chief information commissioners and in chief information commissioner and information commissioners. The role of the central information commission and the state information commission is also very crucial and that role is prescribed under section 18 of the enactment. Section 19 provides for the provisions for appeal. The first appeal goes to the senior officer senior to the public information officer in rank within the public authority. Second appeal goes to central information commission 
or the state information commission as the case may be. The third appeal goes to the concerned high court, then from the decision of the high court, one can go to the Supreme Court for appeal. Section 20 provides for the penalties, provisions providing for penalties for default of CPIOs or SPIOs. Penalty has been prescribed rupees 250 per day to the maximum limit of rupees 25,000. This is all about the Right to Information Act, the different aspects of Right to Information and the procedures to be followed by the public information officers, etc. Thank you very much. Hello and welcome to this piece of literary snippet. Perhaps the most popular literary genre after novel is the short story. Sharp, compact narratives whose charm lies not only in what is said, but also in what remains unsaid. Today I will be reading one of the shortest instances of a short story that I have ever encountered. And Indeed, the very charm of this particular story that I am going to read out today lies in the way it abruptly ends. It is an ancient tale from Mesopotamia which has been retold by several authors among whom the name of Somerset Mom stands out. Uh, the adaptation that I will be reading out is perhaps the closest to the one that Mom wrote. The story is titled, in all of its adaptations almost, as Appointment in Samara. Here is the story. A merchant in Baghdad once sent one of his servants to the market. The servant was supposed to buy provisions for the merchant, but when he returned, he came back empty-handed. Indeed, the servant had all gone white and trembling with fear, he told his master that he had met death in the marketplace. When I entered the market, the servant said to his master, I was jostled by a woman and when I turned to look at her, I saw that she was death. I am very scared, master, because death looked at me with a threatening gesture. Can you please lend me your horse so that I can fly away from Baghdad to the town of Samara and thereby escape death? The master, being a good man, gave his servant his best horse and saw him gallop off to Samara to escape death. Then the master himself went to the marketplace and confronted death. Why did you make a threatening gesture to my servant? Asked the master to death. And death replied, it was not a threatening gesture. Rather, it was a start of surprise. I was astonished to see your servant here today because this evening, I have an appointment with him in Samara. See you in the next episode of Literary Snippet. <laughs>